more hits than anything I could ever even dream of putting up. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> We got that sent us and we were on acid. Look at that. Li- that is the littlest. Di- that's a. It looks like an acorn. Look at that guy. This is one of the funniest things. And I can't put it on Twitter because they'll throw me off for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they will throw they you will off for sure. Th- this will cancel my Twitter subscription <laughs> for sure. <laughs> After the balls, you think they just have you on a list? Oh, yeah. They're watching me now. Six, eighth grade when this came out. I remember going to like other high schools, like, kick it, Lee, don't turn this up, <laughs> I'll stab you. Uh. See, you're lucky you got this cool in the gang. The cool in the gang I got was Cherish. Remember that one? Oh Cherish the love no, and all no. that's cool in the gang I got. This is fresh But then when Pulp Fiction, Jersey. was it Pulp Fiction that brought this back? That's what introduced me to this cool in the gang. This I, is I knew the wrong cool kick in the gang. Kick it, Lee. Here we go. Hit it. Kick it, Lee. Didn't understand me? I don't know what's going on. That's great that you got exposed to that, and that's what Ray Canella said. Ray Canella is a friend of the podcast, a kid I grew up with. I was in a band with him in the sixth grade. He worked for Sci-Fi. What was your band's name? Uh, you Suck. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name. All right? so by the way, you got to hit me up with names. Everyone's I wanted to know. Names. I figured you guys uh, had a good one. No, we had no name. We were lip syncing, singing the Beatles. If I'm going to relate to you, I should be able to say it to you in a way maybe you hadn't thought about saying it, but you get my point exactly. That makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. You're freaking me out of here. <laughs> you look good too, Joey Diaz. So do you. Everybody's you looking do. good. Lisa, I got some sun to him this weekend up there in the Southern Resort. I had a good time in Minneapolis. Such a great little room, man. I, I hear it, yeah. The super nice people. I gave, some, some guy gave me maple syrup and rice. <laughs> And then he wrote me a note, but he didn't write me his name. I can't even give him a shout out. He gave uh, you syrup and rice? Oh was, it, was it cooked rice or was it just yeah, a bag of Like each? in a bag to cook it. Then some other guy gave me two hits of acid. <laughs> People asked me if I want to do meth. That's a crazy thing. They're going to send me to the re- to I lost the acid. I can't crazy find house. it. It was in my wallet somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, my God. I'll bump into that someday when you're in an airport yeah. stuck. You stick your head in one of your compartments and there it is. A hit of acid and you got a nine hour stop. And you got some e-cigs, you got a vapor pen to go for broke, Jack. I told you. I Look, here it is. I, I smoke weed, obviously, but drugs have always, they've always scared me for me. But in the right situation. What's the worst drug you've ever done? Uh, I mean, outside of weed, the only two drugs I've ever done are shrooms one time, and I did uh, ecstasy like twice. What did you think of And the, the first time it didn't work. The second time, a girlfriend I was dating from Argentina gave me that. We went and rented a cabin up in Big Bear. That was the gr- one of the greatest nights of my life. I mean, it was... I, how, I, how long were you the, high with, for? Oh, hours. Six, five hours, maybe. And I mean, I, I understood finally, because everyone kept describing to me what it did and how it felt. And finally, when I felt that permanent smile get plastered on my face, I was like, oh, this is what it is. And it was just... That was a lot of fun. But shrooms to me, 45 minutes. And then I was just like, all right, I want this. Enough. Get it out of me. Get it out of me. You know, I always, if I ever, I don't know, most of the time I don't get high. I just, you know, smoke and I relax. And then you just dissipate and float out of it. But with shrooms, I just hung around and I wanted it to be over. I was like, enough of this. Last Sunday we did a head of acid on the show and it was... uh pretty intense it got pretty intense at moments it was and it was fun and i had to leave because if not we would have stayed here till six in the morning like that's how you feed an acid trip is with people talking conversation and smoking weed and i don't know if i could have gone out publicly like i used to you could go out publicly on acid when i was 16 where really? would you go i didn't have a house i didn't yeah. I, I i lived with some people but i couldn't stay in and watch tv with them and do a hit of acid. So you met four of your friends and you took a hit of acid at 7.30. <laughs> that meant by 11, you're burning. Yeah, you yeah. are burning. <laughs> How old are you? 16, <laughs> 17, and you're behind the high school looking See, I would have come with you, but I would have yes. been scared to death to looking do the acid. Looking at the clouds. Be we'd get, in those days, you bought $25, got you like 30 joints. So you rolled them up. You rolled up 30 joints before you went out. So everybody knew where they stood. Go to Dallas Shade Club, <laughs> popsuckers!
a girl broke up with me over not going to the Rocky House. <laughs> <laughs> You got a we personal were, vendetta for that. We thing. weren't even boyfriend, girlfriend. Well, were you? She, I was 19. She was 27. <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was my neighbor. She was an Italian girl from Milwaukee, and she had a sister, Tia, Mia, something. And she used to cut my hair, man. I was a 19 year old kid. I, I just moved from Jersey to Basalt, Colorado. And she goes, What's your problem? And I go, I like you. I got a crush on you. And she goes, Just say so. Just don't put your hand under my skirt. That's not gentlemanly. Like she goes, what do you want to do? You want to take me on a date? Just tell me your intentions. It was that blatant. Like it was that blatant. And I go, I really don't know. I just, I don't know. I thought, I thought I'd take it to a movie or something. And she goes, I'll date you, but you got to move out of the next door. She goes, I can't date a neighbor. It'll never happen. And I was moving anyway. We were moving at the end of the month. So I waited till July 1st. <laughs> And I hitchhiked down there. This is the savage I am. 10 o'clock at night. And I just knocked on her screen door. And she's like, what are you doing here? I go, I moved out. I'm ready for our date. What do you want to do? And she goes, come on in. And I think we did a little blow. Her sister was there. The sister was really nice. We talked for a little while. And then she took me upstairs. And I think we stayed up all night and did dirty stuff. And... <laughs> And uh, she drove me home the next day, and it was like she was old, you know, she was older. But I remember the first time my roommate in Snow Mask caught me with it, because she would go to work five to twelve or five to ten, so she would come up in the afternoons, and my buddy would be, you know, working, but he knew her from the building. We all lived together next to her. I, I just never told him that I was with her. It's nobody's business. She came up one afternoon with brie cheese. That's the first time I ever <laughs> ate brie cheese and an apple dog. I'm an American cheese type of guy. At that time, I'd only tasted American and Swiss cheese, and that was all. How do you know that? And she you showed had up. Parmesan. <clears throat> she showed up with brie cheese and an apple, and she smeared it on the apple. And I'm like, Are you crazy? I'm from Jersey. And she's like, eat that. And I'm like, no. We got into like an argument. It looks like pimple juice. It smells funny. You want to bring me cheese, you bring me American cheese. <laughs> American cheese that's, on that's apple That's probably a story she oh tells my, now. Oh, my God. I dated this guy who wouldn't eat brie cheese. Dog, I was fresh out of Jersey. Do you understand me? Well, you, you <clears> wouldn't <throat> eat her brie cheese and you wouldn't go to Rocky Hall. I didn't know. Would... And then she still dated me. We would hook up once a week. And just eat something and have sex and stay up all night. Sometimes we did blow, sometimes we didn't. It wasn't about that. Never no beefs. It was nice people. I never got picked up by no. In fact, Don Henley picked me up from the Eagles. Come on. <laughs> Don Henley picked me up from the Eagles one time. And on the 4th of July, 1983, John Denver picked me up going up the hill to Snowmass Village. Yes, he did. I got a that's special how, little love for John that's Denver. That's how cool that time was in my life. Hold and, on. And, and I was. Tell me about Don Henley. Like, he pulls over. Don Henley pulls over in a truck, okay? Now, from the minute I hit Snowmass Village, I'm hearing all these rumors. I'm hearing that Jack Nicholson lives in Maroon Bells, which he did. I'm hearing that Clint Eastwood hangs out at the Holiday Inn at the airport. In those days, it was a little Holiday Inn at the airport, and I heard Clint Eastwood was there four nights a week. <laughs> at that time, Hunter S. Thompson hung out at the Woody Creek Tavern six nights a week and there were rumors that people would go visit him I didn't know anything about anything there were rumors that the Eagles, half of them lived in Aspen there was rumors that the, another band that was cousins to the Eagles the Nitty Ditty Gert Band oh yeah, like Nitty that, Gritty Dirt Band they yeah. were cousins to the Eagles <clears throat> okay. in fact, towards the end of my electrician career I hung, <laughs> I hung fixtures at the guy's house from the Nitty Ditty Grip Band. <laughs> okay? So, yeah, there was all these rumblings of these people that were in town. There was also rumblings of people who came to visit, you know, Charles Bronson. So, here I am, a young kid, didn't know I wanted to get into the entertainment business, but was a huge fan of movies, and I'm bumping into people. So, I'm hitchhiking. I'm minding my own Night, business. Night, day. No, is... it's 2 in the afternoon, okay. July afternoon. I'm hitchhiking. I'm living in Colorado maybe three months, four months at the time. I'm living in Snowmass Village. I get in the truck. 
how you doing, what's happening, what's your name, blah, blah, blah. My name. I don't even know if we discuss names. I just know that after about five minutes, I kept looking at him. He looked familiar to me. Now, do you want me to lie to you and tell you I knew Don Henley was from the Eagles? At that, I couldn't put it all together. I'm just trying to figure out where I know this guy from. And the next thing you know, I go, I know you, I know you, I know you. And he finally just breaks down and he goes, yeah, okay. I'm Don Henley. I'm the singer from the Eagles. <laughs> and I go, you live in town? And I don't know what he said. I mean, it was like a, a five-minute conversation. Mr. Colt. <coughs> yeah. Uh-oh. From that encounter, me knocking on the door at one in the morning, coked up out of my mind. He came out, you all right, dog? Let me get you a beer. He got me a beer, and he walked me, and he walked me to my door, and I go, I'll catch you tomorrow. And I, and I look, I never forgot his name, Bergie. Bergie from New York City, from like fucking 154th Street. My family's Irish. <laughs> so that's when John Denver picked me up in the afternoon, like at 1 o'clock. John Denver. Dog, I got in that Jeep, and I couldn't believe it was John Denver. I'm like, oh, my God. But there was no cameras. I didn't hug him. Nothing. Yeah, I don't no, even think no, I got an no picture to talk. I ran into uh, <clears throat> I ran into Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac at a bagel joint in the Valley in Sherman Oaks, and he was sitting in there with I, I can only assume it was a manager or some business representative in some aspect. But I just walked over to him to go, Mick Fleetwood. He's like, Yeah. I go. I just wanted to shake his hand. I couldn't believe I saw Mick Fleetwood just sitting and chilling in this little tiny corner. Steve Simone bumped into Giza Butler at the Chinese restaurant. Oh yeah. And he said he knew it was Giza. He wanted to say something to him, but he didn't want to bother him. There was always a by the way. There was always a by the way. I had just robbed somebody. I got somebody's coke. That coke is snorting with me, having a good time at three in the morning. I go, listen, I got to tell you a story. You know, and now you're in. There you are sitting. I'm in your living room. You just did an ounce of my coke that we just robbed from Pete the Killer. And here you are sitting there going, you're dropping this on me now at 3 in the morning. That's terrible. So I'm an accessory right now. Somebody could kick my door in right now and shoot you. you for being a nice guy. Yeah, oh, please. That was me. That was me. That was who I was. I, uh, can I use the restroom? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. In fact, put on some Tony Bennett. What happened? You drank water and soda. I'm staying hydrated. Oh, yeah, you got to stay dry. Hey, you gotta <laughs> dry Kick it up, be a little Tony Bennett. It's going to be a good week. Halloween's next week. I want to be around. Yes. Oh, and, but it's, it's like, it was 28, I think, because it's all you can eat. 28 a piece. They give you an hour. They make sure right. you eat the rice. They don't want no problems. <laughs> oh. They really watch you. Now. Do Look, they really? The, the waitress, I was there two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It's pretty good. I went in there one day. It's okay. You could get sick in there. They're borderline. They give you the fish that's just about to go bad the next day. Well, you eat it. I don't just get a, weird stuff, man. I get like shrimp. And I keep tuna. it light too. The salmon. The salmon is what I like. I always go to get salmon, right? I goof around with Lee. I, I love Lee to death. You know, I always call Lee. I go, Lee. I got heroin tonight. I got opium. I got real biscuits. And, you know, <laughs> you know that, that one is. Leo called me. Now, I'm in an Uber, and I got nothing but edibles. You know, but I'm just yeah. tortured. No, well, but then that hash. You said we had opium that night, and I had no idea what that because that hash was different than the regular hash. Oh you yeah, have. I show up. So, you know, I I so anyway, it's really weird. Like, I talk about all this crazy. Like, I'm very thankful we did not do two hits of acid off the bat last week. I'm telling you right now, that acid, it would have, <laughs> when Ari laid on the Until floor, Tuesday. there was just different things. That, that acid was really good. I want to thank, what's his name? He knows what his name is. You know I love you. It had been years. There was a point here for two hours. I was gone. When, we were on the front, when you say gone. gone, tell me, where, where, what do you, where are you? Gone? Yeah, the like. Giggles had taken over. Okay. I was baseline. I was borderline about, I was seeing little things. I wasn't seeing. Are problems. you present mentally? Can you have a conversation? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. good. But you're just laughing. Because I know you I could figured, tame it. Yeah. You could tame it. Unless they look at you and your eyes are pinned, they won't know. And you have to know how to juggle people, get them out of the way, and then look at that person that you're with that right, trip. Yeah. The whole thing about the acid the is the four or five people you're with. And you set them loose in the bar, and that's where the fun time is. <clears throat> and everybody gets their bag on. And then you all connect again at three when the bar closes. Oh, my God. And you go eat. And everybody's sitting there going, oh, yeah, this acid wore off. Yeah, yeah, this acid wore off. Because it plays with your emotions. 
And next thing you know, you're laughing at the waitress uncontrollably. <laughs> the cheeseburger is funny. The French fries look funny. The cook's wearing a French hat. Like everything that could happen, everything that could happen so is it's like, I can't believe this is happening. You fucking wake up, you do 10, 10 jumping jacks. You have an egg and the edible's gone. You know what I'm saying? Nobody gets hurt. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Nobody gets yeah. up in the morning and calls you and say, Joey, I need 10 more of those edibles right away. Yeah, right. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, 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 you know. Yeah. You know, you do blow with somebody till 6 in the morning, they wake up, that Coke is good, they'll call you and go, I'm coming over there right now. You're like, wow, this guy woke up and this is what was on his mind already. That was bizarre. I never wanted to be that guy. But I'm sitting there going, you know, me and Lee, I torture Lee and... It would be fun to do a line of Chinese heroin. It would really be fun to come in on a Sunday night and get a little brown, <laughs> little chunk of heroin and just do a little taste. I'm not really. doing heroin. And, you know, we, what's going line. on in our lives right now? This is when you die. It's like Len Bias. He got drafted. Oh, you're breaking my he heart. He was a fucking Boston yeah. Celtic. He sure was. And all of a sudden, he's dead. And you sit there and go, this is a shameless death. Even that acid the other night, that acid wrong, Jack. We're having a great time right now in our lives. I'd love to do MDMA and all that. That was crazy, the acid last week. And that's what came to my mind. Like, if I did an acid, what if I did two of those that night and my heart I had a heart attack in my sleep, like Rowdy Rowdy Piper? And I could feel my heart pounding as I'm falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. I could feel it pounding. I've done it a thousand times on cocaine. How can he's an old man, Joe Diaz? How can you? Do acid. I need that on Lee's conscience. I, you know what? I'm good. I'm good with the weed. That's me. That's the, I'm good. I'm good. This I'm really is, good. This is what's always scare me. I, you know, I'm from Maryland, and I remember I was on my way to the dentist with my father when we were listening to the radio, and they announced Len Bias was dead from cocaine overdose, and we were just like blown away. Like, like I'm what? still blown away by that. I'm still blown away by that, and that was like stuff like that. And, and also, we have a cousin who's uh, a paranoid schizophrenic. This guy's, you know, admittedly done every drug that there could be done <laughs> since he's been, like, 16, dude. He's, I'll tell you something. And that's the other thing that, they he's always, crazy. When I, in the shower tonight, I was thinking about when I was a kid. And, you, and when you first, like, thought about doing acid, like, you went to some neighborhood guy, and you're like, so tell, me, <laughs> so tell me about acid. And it's like, oh, the trip, it's psychedelic, the Hindus, Jimmy Page, this and this. But then he goes, you know, at one point one day you, hit a, you do a hit of acid, you don't come back. That's what I need in my life, like Sid Barrett to take a hit of acid. That's exactly day, my cousin. And it throws my, yeah, that's what Wait, happens. That's what happens to him. You would just stay like high on acid? You just don't come back. You don't come back. He, he was a great lacrosse player. He was being looked at by Hopkins. He was an athlete. He was a black belt in karate. He used to be able to put his foot through a watermelon, and he kept taking acid. And he never came back he from it. Came back. He didn't. And he'll, he's... He'll, no more feet through he, watermelon? He used to put his foot through a watermelon, man. He was, a, he was, a, you, he's a bad ass. Really Let me tell you where he is now. Now, and so him and, and Len Bias, always the reason I was always like, I feel like I'm a candidate for first-time use, if it really was their first-time use, dead that night. Uh, but my cousin now, I shouldn't laugh, but... but uh, We'd go over and see him at Christmas. Me, both my brothers, and then my three cousins who were his kids. We got, we'd, we'd go to my aunt's in Highland Town in Baltimore City, and then we would take him like a plate of food. And we'd get over there, and we would be smoking and drinking and stuff. And then he would call on our ride back and rat us out and say those kids were over here smoking and, and you know, <laughs> drinking and smoking weed. So we get back, and our grandmother and her sister are you know, yelling at us. And all we always would say, you, really, you going to believe a paranoid schizophrenic over us? So then we go back over, like, look, if you ever want to eat again, you don't rat us out. And I used to go spend time with him, and he would swear that doctors were coming in at night and dropping liquid acid in his ears and then taking skin grafts and stuff from him. So he would nail his windows shut. But still, somehow, they would get in. And he would have poetry written all over the walls because he said when these doctors would come in and drop liquid acid in his ears it would knock him out and then they would leave and he'd still be out for a while and the love of his life would show up and because he couldn't be conscious to tell her what he wanted to tell her he wrote this stuff up on the walls for her so that's what I mean by never coming you back never come back well, yeah, I can't have you, you take gave a me this stuff sure why not you gotta take a chance Columbus <laughs> did <laughs> <laughs> They wouldn't have you over there if you were rinky dink. I don't drink. I'm gluten free now.
favorite Christ kid. There he is. Felipe Sparza. What's up, fool? Good AKA to be back. The American Dream. Hi, those spoons. Here we go. What's up there, Felipe Sparza? Give us some track. Track. Lee Sayat, what's cracking? I'm what's just, up, I'm, just I'm, I'm disappointed for Oakland. They finally got an amazing team and they got like a, a two, less than a two year, like, clock on it. You know, they're going to Vegas. I know, Did they man. win yesterday? No, no they, they lost, but, um, yeah, they're going to be there for two years while they build a stadium in Las Vegas. That's like um, breaking up with your wife or your girlfriend, but she gets yeah, to live that you took that, that powder, but it was actually meth. Yeah, yeah, it was meth. <laughs> <laughs> I was like in middle school watching a Patriots playoff game in the snow, and you were doing meth oh for people God. to do cocaine in. Bro, like, where, wherever there's a bar with darts, there's cocaine. I don't know. Cocaine and darts go together. I it didn't drives know that. me crazy when I'm snorting coke and somebody's throwing <laughs> darts. I know, man. I always think one of those darts is going to backfire. <laughs> so I had a, my brother, the guy I'm going to see, his daughter that has the cancer on Wednesday. He's a dart guy. So I get a gram of coke with him, and next thing you know, I'm shooting darts. I go, man, we go together like darts and coke. And the bathroom is always, you got to walk past the darts. <laughs> yes. So you, every time you pee, you got anxiety because you got to stop the game and walk past the darts. God forbid you don't have your hunting camouflage <laughs> suit on and one of those coke heads throws a dart at you. Darts or that stupid rifle game, duck hunts, whatever yeah. it is. Then they have the the best is the dart league. It's an excuse to get uh, lit, lit on a Tuesday. That's all dart league is. By the time you get there, you can see the target. By the time you leave, there ain't no target, okay? It's a, it's, yeah, it's man. humorous. I'm not putting darts down or anything like no, that. No, man. Darts is cool, man. I'm darts just is saying, cool, but darts and drugs. That's a great point you made, Philippe, because I grew up in two bars and then, that they snorted coke, and right <laughs> away they would break the darts out. <laughs> and my anxiety level would go up to a 1,000. It seems dangerous. It's it good. is dangerous. Man, if you're coked out, man, and doing darts, it's perfect, man, because your nose already pointing down, so your eyeballs are looking straight ahead. Really? I not even know what we're doing, huh? No, Felipe calls me. I go, yeah, what's up, dog? I'm outside. Okay. We get in the car. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm heavy-duty junkie, guys, and here's your witness, okay? He goes, where do you want to go? I go, let's take a ride. I think we smoked a joint. We went behind El Compadre. I walked in. I took a gram off the guy. I got in the car. Now, you had money. You wanted to give me to buy Coke, but you knew I wouldn't get you Coke. Yeah, I had 60 bucks ready. Big right. Back. And I got in the car in front of Felipe. And you put a whole straw in there and you did it all. And I did the whole gram. I looked at him like a guy he that He was- could not <laughs> believe it, guys. Oh, my God. My on mouth the got to- dry. On the, to- on the drive from El Compadre <laughs> to Highland and uh, Fountain. I would always, it was instinct. That was where I would do, at that light, I would snort whatever was in the bag, half of it. And then when I pull up to my house, whether the front or the back, I would snort the other half of what was in that bag. So when I got on the elevator, I went right upstairs. There was no questions asked. When I walked in the house, it was to go right to the bathroom. And no cop ever saw you do a a half I'm a professional. Can you imagine getting together with a girl on a Sunday night? And you don't make it to podcast on Monday. Like, you just don't make it. You just don't get home till Tuesday morning. Is my phone ringing? Nothing. Your phone is dead. You're at the Holiday Inn down the corner. You got there Sunday night with some broad. You called uh, your girl and told her you were Joey at the podcast studio that you might be there all night. She calls you at 6 before she goes to work. You pick up the phone and go out to the balcony and tell her you fell asleep on the couch. You got really high and you don't feel good and you're going to go back to bed. You'll be home in a little while. She goes to work. You give that chick another stab and you look around the room and there's still a little Coke rock left and there's still six beers left. Next thing you know, it's 11 o'clock and they're calling you. Are you going to stay in your room again, Mr. Lee, for another day? Oh, my God. Well, ain't nobody going nowhere. You have no idea, Lee. You have no idea. You don't care about your job, your employers, your families, what commitments you had. It really doesn't matter when you're on a tear. I know, man. I, you should have checked out a long time ago. You have a plane to take off. You're there an extra day. Like a soldier. I don't want you to think about getting depressed. I want you to think about your possibilities that we were in the hole we were in. <laughs> I'm out of Philly. My man, the flying Jew, direct from Jerusalem. Are you kidding me <laughs> or what? 
What's happening, brother? Not much, dude. It's uh, it's been an interesting couple hours with That's you right. last night when he when he texted me. I went to Paul. I was like, "Look who texted me." She's like, "I thought he didn't text." I'm last like, night it was going down. Last night, you understand me? Let me tell you something. My biggest fear is needles. Yeah. My biggest fear is needles in the world. I hate going for them. You know, when I cop to them, when you call me and go, Joe, you have to come in for a shot or something, I go, yeah. And I play it off, and the night before, I'm a mess. Like the night before, before I go to bed, it hits me as I put the sleep apnea mask on that I got to go for a shot. So yesterday morning, I had to go. That was all I had on my agenda yesterday. And you know me, dog. You know, the reason why I get fired up like this, Lee, isn't because I get fired up. I have to talk myself into things. Yeah. You have to talk yourself into things. Whatever it takes, you know. I feel this so, goomy coming in. So. Day three of Lee Syatt's workout. I'm very proud of him. I'm trying. He's trying. He knows. He knows. He, and, knows. And the he thing, went to Florida. The and thing went... you told me was going to happen, happened. So, yeah, I, I, the first day I went early in the day. And I liked it, but it was I slept the rest of the day. Like, I got home. Your body went to shock. Yeah. You did 15 like, minutes on the epileptic. I was going to try to watch you on Rogan, and I couldn't do that. I, I, I watched a little bit, but I fucking passed out, and I slept... Probably from then, I woke up for like a couple hours, but mostly all day. And then yesterday, Paula came over, so we wanted to go later in the afternoon, and I was worried it was going to be packed. It wasn't. They have a lot of machines over there. But I did, I could do 15 on the elliptical instead of 10. I was dying. And then I went to the bike, and a lot of people say that they get motivated by like the really, and the really fit people. And it doesn't do anything for me, because I know I'm never going to be able to do that. Mm. So I look for the fat people. And I come like, yeah, there's a lot of fat people here. And I just happened to be next to a chubby black guy. And I like Paula finished a little bit before me. And she said, and I said, I just want to get to 15 minutes on the bike. Because I was at like 6. And as soon as I got off at 15 on the dot. And as soon as I got off, the black guy like tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, you got to 15, right? I'm, he's, I'm like, yeah. He's like, good for you for coming out, man. It, it takes a lot of mental That's stuff. Great. And he's like, I've been coming for two months. I went from 315 to 298. Wow. And Listen, I was like, man. that's, what, that's I, awesome. I did it. I did everything because I was dying. But like, just that little bit of nice. Because I would never do it, but that little bit of niceness that, that, that he and I was like, if you got the syringe, take it. You're 25 and then, years old. And you know what? The, it's the, all. I wish I was 25 years old now. Yeah. To tell you how easy it it could be when because you don't want to do this when you're 40. No. When you're 40, there's gonna come a time you're gonna gain 30 pounds and you're gonna go. You know what? I already did this. Yeah. I did this, so this is coming right off. You yeah. talk to some people. L- listen, man, <clears throat> when I talk to you, when was the last time me and you got emotional? We don't. We talk about podcasting or Steve Simone and his podcast or Rick Ramos or a movie or hummus. You know, yeah. it's really nice to talk to people that just want to talk sometimes. You think I go to jiu-jitsu because I'm going to be a world champion jiu-jitsu guy at 58? No, because I sit with people. It's, it's something that I don't have to go look at Steve because no matter what Steve and Simone and I talk about, within six minutes, we're going to be talking about comedy. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And you and me, within four minutes, we're going to be talking about, so what do you think of this guy? With, <laughs> you know, you're always talking about the entertainment. Yeah. Sometimes when you go to a gym, it's normal to just people. be normal people. Yeah, it's so true. When I first started this fitness thing, I said for me, I want. when I first got off Coke, I said I want to get back to the where I was when I didn't know. How are we going to document to you falling down a cliff today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my you God. Bet. What else you got planned? You going to movies? No, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I saw I saw that uh, Tom Cruise movie already, and that was okay. Nothing great. But, uh, no, I don't Is there anything out? I don't know. That's just your job. <laughs> I got to keep am, it. To. You're the I'm, youth. You're I'm the youth. Feeling high. I'm a, you're the young man on the show. You're right. the one that keeps this together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's Friday. You're the captain navigator on this show. I'm a 15 year old man. Right. So what do you got planned this weekend? Well, I got nothing. I'm rest. What do I got planned? I'm an old <laughs> man. There's no rest. Do you think that gotta a go man? Take a walk. Gotta go I'm gonna probably up and leave down. here. Go do some kettlebells. I think they're going swimming. The oh, wife and the adorable. baby are going. Do you like working out high? I feel like it's gonna. It would cause like a, like a panic attack. Tremendous. If you do, now do, when you get on the epileptic, do you put your earphones on? Yeah. Wait till you work out high. This is tremendissimo. You I guess. Forget, and then you'll say to me, because once you get into a song, see what happens when you're in the epileptic you look at that clock. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay, everybody does leave. So you look at it, at when you get on, you go, I'm going to do five minutes, and I'm like, then when you get to five, you start having a good time. It starts loosening up a It's the bit. music that will take you to the next level. It's 100%. Not, it's the music. 
And then a good song comes on, and all of a sudden you go, you know, I'm going to do 10 minutes. And then you say, I'm going to do 12 minutes. I read the 12. Let me do 15. Go over there with, what's his name? Who hangs out with Doug Benson, my buddy? Nice kid. I don't know. He's into... The Palm s- Strike guy, right? He's into... S- Grant? Yeah, Grant. Graham has signed up for Japanese sword fighting. Oh, Now cool. you go, Graham, get it together. What are you going to do? Whip your sword out <laughs> in Compton? I'll shoot you in the head 10 times. Right. It doesn't matter. He's making his mind think. Yeah. He's making his mind think. Those Japanese did that to do something else. That was the bridge to do something else. For us to have a successful podcast, I need for you to take your mind away. Take your mind away from Paula. Take your mind away from the Boston Red Sox. All that nonsense, because that's all it is at the end of the day, and get into yourself. Yep. I remember when you joined the Hollywood gym, too. The boxing gym there. Yeah, that's right. You were, you were the, he used to yeah. let me in. He was the front desk clerk. Yeah. Oh, really? Go, go ahead, yeah. And I would go in at night because I was embarrassed for people to see me in the daytime. Lee, we yeah. all have the same Everybody. Fear. And me, we're going to do a New Jersey tour. We're going to go to San Francisco. You gonna, what are you going to do when you're you going to take my fifth food on the plane? You open my fifth food on the plane, Lee, and I will beat you to death. <laughs> did your family almost make you, did they try to give you food for the plane? Yeah. Oh. Dude, this, but yeah. What they give I, you? But this is what, what I did. You, they didn't give you a tuna sandwich, correct? No. No, what they Dude, give Dude, I had homemade meatballs. I had homemade menagot. I had. That's uh, what you open up on a plane and people look at you and go, that smells tremendous. <laughs> we had uh, the roast pork. Even homemade cheese steaks. It was great. Oh, Every, yeah, everything was They make was homemade great. cheese steaks? Yeah, because my brother's uh, mother-in-law is straight off the boat from Naples. The best. Now, can you eat red meat? Because I thought about this last night because I went to the Mediterranean place and I got chicken. Because can I, can I have grilled steak? Is red meat okay? Yeah. I, you know what I was just going to say? What saved me my last trip home was portion control. Portion control is How, how many ounces of meat should you have? I didn't, you know, I didn't overdo it. Like I gotta be, I used to the kill. The size of your hand. Yeah, yeah, I used That's to kill it? a whole okay. pizza. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. But now it's just two slices. You can do just two slices. It's the size of your hand. Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers is very good because it's portion control. Yep. It's a county jail diet. That's what I call it. It's a county jail diet. So you go to you go to uh, Denny's and you get two eggs, toast, home fries, bacon, and two pancakes, and that's a great breakfast. Okay. Mm-hmm. But after you leave there, what do you look at Steve and go, I'm full? Yeah. And you realize you didn't need all that food. I used to yeah. eat to the point where I couldn't walk to the car. Yep. Jesus. I'm not going to lie to nobody. And so yeah. do you, Lee. Yeah. We eat. No, that's the, what I'm thinking about. And I eat so fast. My knock is I eat too fast. Me too. So I oh. eat three quarters of the meal and I'm full, but then, and I eat it. No. And then you realize, Weight Watchers makes you realize that if you take that piece of salmon and cut it in half, you're good. And you take one piece of bread and throw it away, and you take the cheese off that. Because even ketchup has calories in it, you yeah. know? Sugary. I, listen, I love Subway. I love the veggie and cheese from Subway. Mm. My Subway sandwich is a foot-long veggie and cheese with the chips and the soup and the cookie and 10 gallons of those sodas. Yeah. There's nothing like that. But you know what? Buy a six-inch and just leave. Yep. Yeah. Get a six inch and just go. walk out of there and eat it. And you realize you don't need it. Yeah. You know, when you go to Big Mac, you get a Big Mac, the double fries, the right, soda. Right, that's how they kill you. Some yeah. nuggets on the Some side. Some nuggets. You know what? Go to In N Out House. Go to In N Out Burger. They have the cheeseburger. It's eight points with the cheese with no mayonnaise and no sauce on it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you get a half order of fries. And it's six points because the whole container is 12. And you're a good. Diet Coke, and you're solid, even the water, and you're solid. Yeah. Yeah. So you could always kill your cravings. Yes. You know, you could always kill your cravings. You know what? Yeah, and you those? realize you don't need a nut. You, yeah, it's just a little I, taste. I love Oreo cookies, but instead of eating the whole sleeve, because yeah. I kill a sleeve, yeah. you Easy. know what I'm saying? You take one, and you make a deal with yourself. At least so far, the more thing I miss most is the diet soda. So that's showing, like, there must be some chemical oh, there's in a it. chemical thing in there. And, like, cause, like, that's the part that's been killing me. And I'm like, that, maybe that's a, re- a reason not to go back to it. Lee, on the way home, you stop at Gelson's at Ralph's and get yourself. Today, we're going to do everything. You okay. pick me up at 9, we'll go to Kettlebell Play. It's going to cost you a couple of yards today, but don't worry about none. We're going to go over to this place over here because even that fit protein, we'll just get your little protein powder in a container. Okay. And the, you put the protein powder in and you take it with you. And as soon as you finish at the gym, you fill it with water and you shake it up. Okay. No more milk in your milkshakes. Oh, okay. That's it. That cuts another percentage out. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that milkshake, you know, that, that milkshake is 300 calories. You know, you go, you buy a bunch of apples. My wife's been buying cantaloupe, you know. Apples. Yeah, that's another thing. Someone, and you've said it before, and it kind of pissed me off when I was talking to people. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have some fruit. And like, don't have fruit, it's sugar. I'm like, well, I think yeah. fruit's okay. Like, whole fruit foods. Whole, whole, whole foods, whole foods. Let me tell you something about fruit, bro. Eat two apples tonight. Number one, you're going to shit. When you start losing weight, you got to clean that esophagus out. What, what do you McDonald's think is connecting and, to that tube? Oh, yeah. The same thing with me. I got bubble gum in there. <laughs> I got, you know, granola pits. You know, it could either fall apart for you in eight years because the diabetes will come in or whatever. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that goes at you for a long time. I want chocolate cake every day. I'm a yeah. stoner, dog. Bec you just p pass through it. You know oh, what? you don't eat anything? Okay, okay, so yesterday, I went in the kitchen. There was two peaches and there was cheese puffs. I had four cheese puffs and I had the two peaches. <laughs> That's great. I made a deal with myself. I could have ate the half a bag of cheese puffs. Yeah. Do you follow me? It's all compromise. You know, I love pasta. I could yeah. eat pasta every day, but now all these people are saying pasta stays with you yeah. for 80 years. You know what? There's nothing wrong with six ounces of pasta. Right. When you go to Original Joe's, how much pasta do they give you on the Not side Not that much. Dish? A little mini plate. And you'll live on that, and you get full off that. I think pasta is good for you. Only it four portion. ounces. Yeah, that's like how they do it in Italy. What's up, Lee? You, where's nice. that vapor pen? Where, who said another gummy bear? Uh, Was that what you said, Lee? Give me another one. Set me loose. Where's the music, Lee? Pull. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what happened yesterday. Yesterday, I was driving, right? Elton John was on. Mm. A song by the name Harmony. Fine Harmony for me. Harmony by Elton John. I haven't seen your face for a while. Oh, are you still the same spoiled child? Listen to this piano. Hello. Am I the only man you ever had? What? Hit it, Lee. It's Friday. Wash that muffler. Hip hop. Oh, this it's is the early man. 70s, right here. All around your face. What is in bad? Doing everything today. Kettlebells, you're jumping off cliffs. Oh, look at the lead brought you there. He brought you a little chocolate one. With I can't because I'll eat the entire box well, then, and then the rest of this well, podcast. Then go and walk to Glendale and back. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. When's the last time you walked to Glendale and back? Never. I never even I heard the Brian said that we did. I, 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 I got, got, it. got, got you. It terrible. I didn't, I didn't say it was terrible. I just said we want to go for more because we want to make sure that... I know I'm going to get it in La Jolla, but I'm going to record everything. And if I got the recorder, I'm going to record everything forever. How about that? It just makes it easier. I, 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 did you see him? Even his needle got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? <sighs> so what, you're high, Friday? Yeah. What are we going to do today? What are we going to do after this? Come here, Drew. I'm going to go home and go to sleep. No, 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 there's no sleep in your future. What? There's no sleep in your future. Why? There's I'd get in that kettlebell class. That sounds amazing. You're 25 That's years a, old. Uh, that's a game changer. You're 25 years old. What's sleep? It's always like an octopus grabbing you. <laughs> it was like one of those tentacles from an octopus. What's with, what, what's with the hand up? Do you think Pontius Pilate said no? Yeah. He said keep kicking him. You know oh, Jesus. He, he said keep kicking him. Oh, that's terrible. Keep kicking him. <laughs> it's Friday, people. I'm trying to wake up the world here. And I got this guy, and you're upset because Pontius Pilate. You know, <laughs> you know, you know I love you. Throw some holy water on him. You any holy water? You didn't bring the no holy water? I'm going to have another donut. I have two more. 50% off your first order. <laughs> there you go. That's Nature's Box right there. I can't wait to smell that fart. Nature'sBox.com. Go there right now. Okay? And they got the black and white granola. They got the stuff. That was a Whitney Houston solo. He just did. That was a solo from I Always Love You. Just my ass interpreted it wrong. Number three, the best vapor pen in the market. How well, about I put a vapor tube did, up your ass and press my life? Why don't you get a whip this week and whip Paula? And Chinese people riding horses. You can hear our sound for blocks and blocks. I really can't. It's crazy. 
That's it's crazy. A, and 100 with Felicia, so 400. Rich plus however happy. many ever you've done. Man, this is a lot of fun. Ali, what's happening, baby? Man, I'm sitting here still grooving to this Marvin Gaye. You know that's my favorite artist oh in the entire God. world. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's like the trouble, man. You know, with uh, the E Hollywood, not the E Hollywood, the Behind the Music was on, the remastered about uh, maybe four weeks ago. I cried, man. Like, he was, there was something about him, man, when he wore that little beanie. There's a, a YouTube tape of him, and he's singing this. Yeah. But the band is playing, and he's on a couch. Yep. Laying sideways. Have Laying you seen that? <laughs> oh, my God. And he's singing like, this is like me. His... I'm just singing from the couch. Man, this is he's he's done one of the coldest things. Hey, I'm gonna make an album for you, but then I'm gonna make another album for my girl, and then oh. you can get the royalty off that one. Off the, and I'm like, how dope is that that you can make? I'm gonna make a jam and I'm gonna make a better album for my chick, you know, than, than for my wife who's trying to skim me for money. You know, <laughs> take Crazy. that album. I think that's one of the people. When the people ask me what my style is as a comic, I still add Marvin Gaye. In there, I'm like, yo, I'm like part this person, part this person. Then there it is, part Marvin Gaye. How beautiful! And heartbeat gone and getting their timing, and now they're, you know, they're about to set it off. That's how you write music. You yeah. just set it off like that. I don't know. I, I watched the Hollywood and behind the music, and like he hid for two years. Didn't he go like Luxembourg? Yeah. He went to somewhere nobody thinks of going. Did blow. Took a big bag of coke with him <laughs> and a hat. This hat that everybody's wearing now, thinks they're bad. <laughs> took a hat. He took a hat with him. Some coke and a hat. <laughs> coke and a hat, and he went over there. And I mean, I don't know. It's just weird. When I came from Cuba, that was the first music I really was turned on to. And he was one of the biggest names, you know, late 60s. I mean, I still remember that song with the chick. Yeah. That was big. My mom uh, uh, had, was partners on a bar, and they catered to the black people from Harlem on the 27th Street. Yeah. And it was him and that chick. Can't remember the name. So now. Tammy Terrell. Tammy Terrell, one of them. My mom had a lot of those songs in the jukebox, and his voice was just, uh, you know, it's a shame. And when I heard that song that they robbed, I knew that that was a Marvin Gaye song. But I'm like, the audacity of Pharrell. Oh to my even God! Say like he, what? What are you talking about? You thought it up, or you, whatever he, whatever his excuse was, was ridiculous. And then for. Um, what's his name? Oh, I don't know that this Marvin Gaye. Your father knew it was Marvin Gaye. You should have asked your father who wrote all these <laughs> theme songs. <laughs> who is this? It's Marvin Gaye. What, what are you? What are you talking about, that Robin? Sounds Dick? a little Marvin Gayish there. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I heard, I'm what I was confused was because everybody samples today. Yeah. So I thought they were sampling. You still pay rights to it, and I'm cool with that. Hey, you want to sample music to make yours better? You know. uh What's the the Velvet Rope? Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. On one of those songs on that album, she everybody sampled. sampled James Brown. I don't Everybody. mind. Everybody's sampled James Brown. As long as you include it in that beat, I hear that bass, I'm cool with it. But when I heard that, and then I heard there was a lawsuit. Listen, man, what's that dude that last week stuck up with a Confederate flag? Uh, Kid Rock. Oh, okay, yeah, you take Kid oh, Rock. Okay. If I take Kid Rock and sit him down right now, I could quiz, I could quiz Kid Rock on any style of music. Prince? Didn't Prince do a tour where he could you could yell out music two fifty a yeah. ticket and he would play it? That yep. means when you had that ability, you've listened to everything at least one time. Everything, and you're musically inclined, so you'll pick it up. You know what? Wait a second. It's like Mike Tyson. You could get Mike Tyson aside and go, Mike Tyson, who's the best boxer in Cuba? And he in 1953. Down. That you'll sit there and go, How does this guy know this? Because this is what they've committed themselves to. You know, Pharrell. Pharrell, come on! I man. had more faith. I thought that he took him off the voice as soon as he did that. Yeah, yeah come here, come <laughs> here, sir. You in the hat? I yeah, yeah. You in the hat that you stole from Marvin Gaye? Because if you really look at it, Marvin Gaye wore the Charles Bronson cap. You really touched on little things that brought me back to being inside. Let me ask you something: in a real world, it wasn't that bad being inside. You had a fun time. Man, guys that, like you and me. That's the thing that I ah. never get a chance to say that I had a good time. <laughs> it's like I grew up there. I learned. A, I was nineteen. Well, you were nineteen when you went in. Yeah, nineteen. And, and twenty-five when you came. In twenty-five out. when I came. Out. I was twenty-five when I went in. Twenty-six when I went in, and twenty-seven and a half, twenty-eight. I did two years all together with everything because they reconsidered my sentence. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because that, that was like the first time I got all these letters, and it was a very, uh, I got like 800 letters sent from New Jersey. You know, New Jersey's a crooked state, so. But I look at my time now, man, and I got to tell you something. Even in diagnostic, where I always tell people, <laughs> I always, I told Bert Crash, I go, listen, if you think black people talk in movie theaters, don't go to diagnostic. Don't go to diagnostic. Because it's all night long. It's all, and the brothers are yelling, from, and from the sixth floor, they'll yell down, little neg, little neg, what's going on, baby boy? Nothing, big G, yeah. just doing our thing. <laughs> what's going on with that? And they're having a conversation at 2.30 in the morning, like, you're not even in the room. And it's magnifying in your little cell. It even yeah. magnifies more. I remember when I got sentenced, and I can't, my heart goes out to you because you got sentenced in Texas. That means that it was hot. Super hot. Super hot. And there ain't no. You have to work they have AC in, in jails? AC. Like what? AC. You get a little fan for $25. Your family's got to put together $10. <laughs> and they send you like a $22 fan. They charge you like $80. They, yeah. they jack the price up. The price it's like a nine ninety five fan. They charge you twenty four ninety five, And you have to buy it directly from the prison. They have a black and white little TV. You know, forty nine ninety five with the antenna with three channels. Did you guys realize you were having a good time when you were there, or is it like after being out ten years? Because while like, if I, like if I was brought to jail today, I would have a meltdown. Like if someone told me I was going to jail, I would have a meltdown. It's segments of good times. It's not like a, a total country club. But then you'll look back and you'll think, oh man, that was a that was all right day that I had today. I had all right day. You know, I had a water fight in in prison with the other with another pod. We was going to necessity <laughs> and. I don't know what happened. One guy threw some water, and then it was like, oh, that's what you're doing? So everybody got bags of water and buckets and all type of stuff. So when they would come back in the same pod, we would throw water at them. They would throw water at us, and the officers couldn't do anything about it because they had to let us out to go get clothes. So it was like, that was a time, and then we played flag football one time. And like gnawing it like a dog. <laughs> 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 that you bond with a couple of people and then you have you say okay that was a good so time. it's like you come in the corner tank it's like this room having another part around the corner that the officers can't see that you're in so you in more danger in a corner tank so i remember being in process and i'm thinking okay i'm they, they already said i'm going to the 10th floor and i'm just sitting there like just don't let it be a corner tank just don't let it be a corner tank and the man gets right to me and says 10 b3 I was like, oh, Lord have mercy. So I get to 10B3, and I'm sitting in, the, like, the little vestibule area, and I'm holding a sandwich. They give you a sandwich with, like, a dot of peanut butter in the middle because you're coming from processing. And I'm sitting there, and some dudes come up to the bars and, like, yeah, that's him right there. And I'm like, yo, what part of the game is this? He was like, yo, that's him. That's the one who slapped my sister. I'm like, I don't even know his sister, and I never even slapped a woman. And then I went back to what my Uncle Alfred said. People going to try to get pumped up to see where you at. You respond to that with savage force. And I was like, then I, my mind clicked in. Yeah, I'm the one that slapped your sister. And when I get in there, I'm going to try to murder you. Hopefully, you. hopefully you already sentenced. And dudes is like, yo, what's wrong with this dude? Like, yo, man, I'm not, I'm too small to allow somebody to think they can do something to me. You know, that's my whole thing. I'm way too small for a person to think that any, you got any type of inch with me. And it was just getting into this. And you and, it, and it's like coming from war when you get back in the streets. Now I have to try to go down, take it down a notch. A notch. Right, right, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, take I'm it down right. like several notches because I know... For six years, I'm capable of murdering anybody. Even though I was a non-violent offender when I came in here, I came in here for drugs. But I'm able to murder anybody in cold blood and just sit there. And just sit there and like, yo, whatever. Because you did something to me. Now, when you get on the streets, you have to slowly try to get adapted to disrespect yeah, straight through combined man, that's it on, man. that's it it's, julia serving in my not world a lot of people who say no 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 julius irvin no dr no, j Jay, nobody knows how does how does anybody just skip him over when they say oh 
he Jordan was better than him. No, Jordan was more marketed than him. But Ju- how is he better than Julius Irvin, man? Julius Irvin got all his moves. Got Dr. J got all his moves. I mean, Jordan got all his moves from Dr. J. Besides one, he couldn't do. He could never do the move when he went behind the rim on the Lakers. He did this on the Lakers when the Lakers. Julius Irvin. Yes, yes, did this he on did. The Lakers. All his best moves. We're oh. against the Lakers. The oh, three man. moves. The dunk in Philly. The dunk. Was oh, that was Cooper. on Cooper. That was on Cooper. Yeah. I was at the game getting one point in Philadelphia. I was a, I was a college kid, Norton Coke, robbing jewelry stores. <laughs> and I was down at Glassboro State, and if they scored 125 points to sixes, you got a free hamburger. If they scored 125 points on the way out, you took your ticket stub to a hamburger joint. They gave you a free hamburger. And we drove down there getting a point and a half. I remember driving down going, this ain't right. They got Moses Malone. They got You know that's a friend of mine. Who's that? Moses Malone. He's a good friend of you mine. You send them my love. You tell Moses Malone, when he played for the Houston Rockets in 1978-79, I took a bus from North Bergen, New Jersey. I had to go all the way to New York City and switch at Port Authority. And I went all the way to Piscataway. And I tell people this all the time, and I'm going to get smacked in the mouth for saying this, but I'm going to come out. If Moses Malone had played against Shaq, he would have taken Shaq and thrown him through the rim. Moses Malone, when he played for Houston, check his numbers, Lee. It was 30 points a game and 24 rebounds a game. Listen, first guys. Play, first play straight out of high school. 24 rebounds a game out of high school. They got discovered that five-star basketball camp. He's from Tallahassee. No, that's Daryl Dawkins. It's Daryl Dawkins. Daryl. That's Daryl Dawkins. Moses Malone. Oh, my goodness, man. But Dr. J. Dr. J. No, no, no. That being I still remember coming home and getting the red, white, and blue ball. This is what America doesn't remember. This is the what ABA. basketball. And I put the red, white, and blue ball between my legs. I was too fat to have a nice number 32 jersey. Okay? This is when he was number 32. And I him, Super John Williamson, uh uh. Uh, the big cheeseburger that went up, Billy Pulse. Billy he Pulse. went out to play for San Antonio, and I used to watch Julius Irving. And I could, uh, once Julius Irving, Julius Irving and Richard Pryor got a hold on me at the same time. When I came from Cuba, it was James Brown. But once Julius Irving got, Julius Irving added the class to my life. I would have still been a runaway <laughs> savage like Moses Malone, because in, in the reality, Moses Malone is just a runaway savage. Lee, how you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Right? You're good tonight. <laughs> the cookie would have been overkill, correct? The 500 milligram brownie? I mean, it's overkill already, but yeah. The no, no, would this is a tremendous overkill. little thing. I want to thank all our weed sponsors from my main man. I don't know what those are. Anarchy Edibles. You don't need oh to God. know, D, all right? I can't no. wait to eat edibles yeah. with you. What happened, though? I can't wait to eat edibles with you. Oh, we're going to lit this one right here. We might close up with this. This is the third hundred podcast. We might have to eat another. <laughs> no, 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 no. What do you mean? No, 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 no. Like, like Lee is begging. We might have to eat another Lee, thing. Lee. Lee's no more eating. Lee, people are at home right now going, Lee, 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 Lee. 300 Lee. episode, Lee. 300 episode, Lee. 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 Or I'll, I'll tell you what, mm-hmm. let's leave it to fate. Either we split the quaalude or we split, or we take a bite out of the brownie. What do you think? Let's split the quaalude. What do you think? And go out, call Paul and tell her you got some more. What are you trying to Cosby me, man? <laughs> I'm not going to Cosby. It's not like I'm going to tie you up and take pics of you and send it to Israel. It's creepy. It's a tiny little bottle. No, they half of this. We'll see the devil. We'll give you a bicycle with a helmet so you don't get hurt. What, you, what is it going to be, Lee? Do you want him or do you want me? Because <laughs> I want you. You know what I'm saying? The words of Prince here. Anyway.